Welcome back, Seth Bling here. You're looking at footage of Donkey Kong for the Atari 2600 being played on my Atari 2600 emulator in vanilla Minecraft 1.13. This footage is actually sped up 64 times normal speed, and here's how the emulator actually runs in real time. It's about a frame per second. Of course, this is a huge speed up from my previous version of the emulator for Minecraft 1.11, when it took about four minutes to render a single frame. This update from Minecraft 1.11 to 1.13 was a big one. Instead of running on 2,000 command blocks, it's now a data pack with about 10,000 MC function files, containing about 30,000 commands. I added an on-screen joystick. You simply click to toggle up, down, left, right, and the button. Since the emulator is actually somewhat playable, I did a speedrun of Dragster. For over 30 years, Todd Rogers held the world record in Dragster with a time of 5.51 seconds which was considered to be the longest held video game world record. However, recently this time came under controversy and was thrown out when OmniGamer disassembled the game and proved that Todd's time was impossible. Here you can see the sped up footage of my 5.57 second speedrun of Dragster, which ties the world record as the optimal time. Of course, the speedrun actually took about 15 minutes on my super slow emulator. However, I will note that the rules on speedrun.com say to use in-game time, not real time, and emulators are allowed. In fact, it's not uncommon for emulators to run at a slightly slower pace than consoles, even if that is usually a fraction of a percent. So technically, the speedrun doesn't break any of the leaderboard rules. Anyway, the emulator now uses thousands of scoreboard objectives to store RAM and ROM values rather than being stored in dirt and stone representing zeros and ones. The only exception is that you can load new ROMs from dirt and stone chunks like before. You just point at a ROM brick with a carrot on a stick and right click to load it. Because data packs and commands in 1.13 yielded so many performance improvements, I was actually able to playtest a bunch of games and fix bugs so that they're playable. Donkey Kong was my go-to for testing because you can start playing as soon as the console turns on. There's a weird glitch if you hit a barrel with the hammer, but otherwise the game seems to operate pretty well. Space Invaders works perfectly, though it's really hard to aim your shots when you're playing at a frame per second. You just don't get any sense of movement speeds. Pac-Man works as well, and you can see the game only renders one of the four ghosts each frame, alternating between them, making the game very blinky. Adventure seems to work fine, though it's a little boring at one frame per second since you're mostly walking through empty rooms. Frogger does too, but has an obnoxiously long jingle at the beginning, which meant that I had to wait several minutes to play it every time. Warlords has some render issues, but the game only works with a paddle controller anyways, which I didn't implement. Combat seems to work mostly correctly, but it's a two-player game, and I've only hooked up one joystick. And finally, Qbert renders the blocks, which looks neat, but the game never actually starts. If you type this command, slash scoreboard player set global debug one, the emulator will display every single processor instruction it's running in chat. Since chat gets logged here in Minecraft log file, this creates actually a very readable trace log, assuming you know 6502 assembly, which is the assembly language programmers use to program the Atari games. These trace logs are my key to fixing bugs in the emulator. If you want to download my emulator and try it out for yourself, there's a download link for the world in the video description. That's about it. Thanks for watching.